Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Val Arkush, Chair of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Thank you for joining us this morning for our August 16th, 2021 COVID-19 update. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to evolve, we're here today to share an update on where Montgomery County stands in the course of this pandemic. Today, I'm joined by my fellow commissioner, Ken Lawrence, and Dr. Alvin Wong, Regional EMS Director. As many of you know, because of the Delta variant, Montgomery County has seen increases in our key COVID-19 indicators for the past several weeks. However, I want to be very clear that the vast majority of the new cases are occurring in unvaccinated individuals. The quickest way to get this pandemic under control is to get vaccinated. Over the past two weeks, the county has been in the CDC-defined substantial level of community transmission which means we are seeing a seven-day average of between 50 and 99 cases per 100,000 residents, or a positivity rate between 8 and 9.9%. And you can see uh, on your screen the chart that walks you through this, and I direct your attention to the red box, uh, which gives you a comparison of July 30th to August 5th, and then August 6th to August 12th. As you can see, we've been above 50 cases per 100,000 residents for two weeks now. However, our positivity rate does remain under 5% at 4.3%. Next, you'll see a graph that many of you are very familiar with, our date tested graph. As a reminder, the vertical gray bars are the number of people who tested positive on that particular day. The dark blue line is the seven-day running average of all cases from the community, and the light blue is the 14-day average of all cases from the community. The yellow and orange lines at the bottom represent those averages from the county's long-term care facilities. You can see that for a number of weeks this spring and summer, the county was seeing case numbers in the single digits, much lower than last summer when we did not have the vaccine available. But for the last several weeks, corresponding with the surge of the Delta variant in our region, the daily cases are rising. Similarly, our 14-day positivity rate and daily testing chart has shown increases over the last few weeks. As a reminder, the orange line is the number of people tested with a PCR test on that day, and the blue line is the number who test positive. Not surprisingly, we're seeing a corresponding increase in hospitalizations with approximately 79 people hospitalized in a Montgomery County hospital today. Seeing this trend, on July the 29th, the Montgomery County Office of Public Health released updated masking guidance for the general public. This new masking guidance is aligned with the CDC's four levels of COVID-19 community transmission which are low, moderate, substantial, and high. This guidance provides Montgomery County residents and businesses with masking recommendations for indoors and outdoors. It also has guidance for people who are immunocompromised or those with increased risk of disease. In keeping with county policy from early earlier mitigation measures enacted throughout this pandemic, Montgomery County Office of Public Health changes mitigation recommendations only after there has been two weeks of a consistent change in cases. In the case of masking, that means a consistent increase or decrease in the level of community transmission. Last Friday marked two weeks that Montgomery County has been in the substantial level of COVID-19 community transmission, which is why the Office of Public Health is now recommending masks indoors for both vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals. I know that this is frustrating and concerning to many, many people. And many have questions about why we are seeing this rise in cases and wondering why vaccinated individuals need to mask up. Well, here's why. The CDC has determined that the Delta variant spreads much more easily than earlier versions of the virus. 
with the CDC saying it's as contagious as chickenpox and more contagious than the flu or the common cold. For example, with the, in, with the original variant of the virus, an infected person typically infected two or three other people. A person infected with the Delta variant is infecting five to eight people on average. Why is this? Well, studies are suggesting and showing that people infected with the Delta variant produce much more of the virus in their nose, as much as 1,000 times more than the earlier variant. Unlike the earlier variants, vaccinated individuals who experience a breakthrough infection, which are COVID infections in vaccinated people, are also likely to be contagious and vaccinated people might spread the virus even if they don't feel sick. So I just want to reiterate that one more time because this is the big difference. In the spring, when people were vaccinated, if they were infected with one of those earlier variants, they were not contagious. But now, if a vaccinated person is infected with the Delta variant, it's quite possible that they will produce enough virus, even if they don't feel sick, that they could be contagious to others who are unvaccinated or even potentially other vaccinated individuals. And this is why we are asking vaccinated people to wear masks indoors. Because this Delta variant is different, we need to change what we're doing to stop its spread. And that is why we're asking again, please, uh, even if you're vaccinated, to mask up in indoor public places. We're now recommending in line with the CDC that given the current level of cases in Montgomery County, everyone should wear masks in public indoor spaces. Vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals should get tested for COVID-19 five to six days after they've been in contact with someone who has the virus, even if they don't have symptoms. However, vaccinated individuals who've been exposed to COVID-19 do not need to quarantine unless they have symptoms. I do want to emphasize that vaccination remains the most important public health action to end the COVID-19 pandemic, and we strongly urge all Montgomery County residents to get vaccinated if you are eligible. I am extremely pleased to report that more than 77% of Montgomery County residents aged 12 and older have received at least one dose of the vaccine. And many of you recall this chart from our prior briefings. On the left side, uh, it goes through the total number of individuals that have been vaccinated. I just want to remind everyone that the data that resides at the Pennsylvania Department of Health does not include 81,563 individuals who are Montgomery County residents who were vaccinated in the County of Philadelphia. So when we add together the data from the Pennsylvania Department of Health with this 81,563 additional individuals, that gets us to our uh, overall percentage of 77.93% of people 12 and older who live in Montgomery County have had at least one dose of the vaccine. And we believe that the majority, vast majority of those individuals are now fully vaccinated. So this is excellent progress, but we still do have a ways to go to fully protect our community, especially given the large number of children who are not yet eligible to be vaccinated. We need as many of those who are 12 years of age and older to get vaccinated. Getting vaccinated remains the best tool available to protect yourself from COVID-19 infection and especially from severe illness and death. The good news is that the currently available vaccines continue to provide significant protection against the Delta variant. Vaccinated people have a much lower risk of getting COVID-19 and a much, much lower risk of getting severely ill or dying. If you're vaccinated, you're at least three times less likely to get COVID-19 and at least 10 times less likely to be severe, severely ill or die from COVID-19 if you do get it.
The county continues to offer the Pfizer and J&J &J vaccines at our county-run clinics. Walk-ups are uh, warmly welcomed at all sites for those that are age 12 and older. And to see a list of vaccine locations, you can visit www.montcopa.org forward slash COVID dash one nine vaccine. That's montcopa.org forward slash COVID dash one nine vaccine. In addition, we've received a number of inquiries from residents who need a replacement vaccination card if they have lost their original card. We are happy to help provide those replacement cards. The Montgomery County Office of Public Health can provide immunization records, COVID-19 vaccination records, and replacement cards at our public health centers to anyone who was vaccinated in the state of Pennsylvania. No appointment is needed. Residents should call the Office of Public Health to confirm we can process your request and the numbers uh, to contact the office are here on this screen. And finally, we wanna remind everyone that no cost COVID-19 testing remains available at our four sites across the county. And again, we urge anyone who's having symptoms or anyone who knows that they've been exposed to someone with COVID-19 to go ahead and get tested. You know, wait five to six days after that exposure, but please go ahead and get tested just to make sure that you've not been infected. Our testing continues to be of no cost to you, and we are getting results back within 24 hours typically. By requiring masks indoors, we're following CDC guidelines to maximize protection from the Delta variant and prevent spread of the virus. I understand that this is difficult to return to masking, but we hope that everyone recognizes the importance of keeping one another as safe as possible until we get through this latest surge and see a decrease in our numbers. We are closely watching for when the COVID-19 vaccine will be approved for children aged five to 11, and we will be ready to give the vaccine at county sites as soon as there uh, is approval to do so. Again, we thank everyone who has done their part by being vaccinated. It is the best way to protect yourself, your family, and our entire community. And with that, I'm happy to open it up for questions. Thank you, Commissioner. And just a reminder to our press who are logged in today, if you please use the raise your hand feature to indicate that you have a question, we will um, call on you one by one. Okay, our first reporter is uh, Deanna Durante with NBC10. Good morning, I have a number of questions, so I don't know, you might wanna tell me ahead of time if I have a time limit. Um, to be clear, you are requiring masking indoors, shopping, restaurants, gyms, across the, the board. The Montgomery County Office of Public Health is recommending Okay, that individuals that point. So <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So let me just be very crystal clear about that. Uh, we are recommending to uh, all business owners and others who have public indoor spaces that everyone wear masks. Here in our county buildings that serve the public, we are requiring that all members of our staff and the public wear a mask in a county build in a Montgomery County government building. But beyond that, it is a recommendation. Okay, at the county vaccine clinics, are you offering boosters at this point and how are you going about it? So at this point, we are following the FDA guidance on this. And as soon as a mechanism is in place to offer a booster, to those individuals that are Im immunocompromised that the FDA and CDC are currently recommending get a booster, we will start to uh, offer that. Don't believe that that process has been fully implemented yet, but as soon as it is, we will do that. If down the road, the CDC and FDA authorize boost boosters for other uh, individual populations, then we will be offering those as well. But right now, it would just be for that group of uh, very specific immunocompromised individuals that was announced a couple of days ago. We're seeing some businesses require proof of vaccination. Is that something that the county is recommending as well? 
We are leaving that decision up to individual businesses. Uh, they know their customers and, and their individual communities the best. So again, we are recommending that everyone indoors in public spaces, whether they're vaccinated or not, go ahead and mask up. Uh, but individual businesses certainly have the right and option to require proof of, proof of vaccination if they wish. Any countywide guidance to schools or are you leaving it up individually to schools and school sports and club sports? So the Office of Public Health continues to work very closely with both our public and private schools. Uh, we continue to meet regularly with both of those groups. There is a updated set of school guidance on our website. I don't know the URL off the top of my head, but Kelly can absolutely get you that. And again, we are generally following the CDC guidance for schools, which is that we are recommending that everyone in schools wear masks as the best way to protect everyone in the schools and promote in-person learning. What do you say to people who say, okay, we were told to get vaccinated. Now we're told to be to masking. There's still going to be the hesitancy to vaccinate if now we're going back to masking. Well, the difference is that the virus has changed. And we've talked about this all along that it is possible for this virus to mutate. And the mutation that we're dealing with now, which is the Delta variant, which is um, uh, assessed to be responsible for more than 80% of the cases that we're seeing right now, turns out to be much more contagious. And the really critical thing about it is that with the earlier variants, vaccinated people were not contagious. But now with the Delta variant, it is possible. And again, this is a small minority of people, but it is possible for vaccinated people to be contagious. That's what has changed. But I wanna emphasize again, that being vaccinated is still protecting individuals from serious disease and from being hospitalized and from dying from COVID-19. So the best thing that people can do to protect their health, the health of their family members and our whole community is to get vaccinated. With many schools trying to get kids back in five days, uh, no hybrid, you know, eliminating virtual. Looking down the road when you have travel and outbreaks, do you foresee a time where the health department would, would exercise what it did back, you know, late fall last year to kind of close things down for two weeks? Is that something that's being discussed if cases come up high in the county again, especially among children before vaccinations are available? Right now, the only thing that we are discussing is uh, a layered mitigation strategy to promote in-person learning. That is everyone's top priority is to get every child back into school with in-person learning. And there are multiple mitigation strategies uh, that schools are implementing and you can see, get a sense of what that looks like by looking at the school guidance. Uh, that is the priority and the schools are working very hard to ensure that that will be the case this year. All right, thank you. I apologize for so mm -hmm. many. I, no problem. I, I might have more Kelly, so I'll text them to you. <laughs> okay, Thanks, thank Deanna. you. Okay, next we're gonna to go to um, Jim McGinnis with the Bucks County Courier Times. Thank you so much for taking my, my, uh, my question, Dr. Arkush. I guess as I think about this situation, I, I, I feel for the people who work in stores, work in restaurants, the people who have to say that you might are in this position where somebody walks in, they don't have a mask on, um, what would you, I mean, if, if somebody walks into the, you're working in the Willow Grove mall and you're just, you know, you're just, a, you're working retail in the mall, somebody walks in, they're not wearing a mask. What would you say to that, that, that worker about what they should do? Should they approach that person? I mean, should, what, what should they say if, if they should approach the person? What, what advice would you give people who, who are kind of sort of in the middle of all this, um, have people going into stores, restaurants, not wearing masks? Well, first of all, um, I would encourage everybody in our community to think about our whole community. We need to pull together here uh, as a community and look out for each other and just put masks on. We have been uh, together in this in Montgomery County from day one, 
The response of our community throughout this pandemic has been extraordinary. And I have full faith and confidence that the residents here in Motco will step up once again and help each other out, even if it's personally a little inconvenient to wear a mask while they're out shopping, that they'll help out everybody in our community by wearing a mask. None of us know what the personal circumstances are of anyone that we're interacting with. We don't know if they have an underlying health condition. We don't know if they live with somebody uh, who's immunocompromised. We all just need to pull together here with the common cause of wanting to keep everybody alive, keep our hospitals safe, uh, not further overburden everyone working in our healthcare systems and make sure that our kids can get back to school in person. So I recommend to businesses that they go ahead and put signs back up, just reminding people that it is recommended that they mask up. Um, I don't want anybody to get in any kind of altercation with one of their customers. I understand how sensitive this is, but making sure that they have masks available. Um, you know, I know people sometimes hop out of their car and run into a store and just forget to grab a mask. So I think having masks available for folks as they walk in the door, having signage and maybe one suggestion, hey, could you just put a mask on for the few minutes that you're in this store could go a long way to help keeping our whole community safe. Okay, great. Next, we'll go to Rachel Ravino with the Lansdale Reporter. Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking my questions. I have a couple as well, but um, for the purposes of time, I can try to keep it brief. Um, uh, Commissioner, because you first mentioned that um, unvaccinated individuals are making up some of the rising cases that we're seeing here locally. Um, where are the biggest areas of concern geographically and um, in terms of demographics, like with age, are we seeing um, it, it across the board? Uh, we are seeing cases pretty much across the county. Um, actually, that's a great uh, reminder for me to tell you that we will be updating the data on our hub website starting today on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Our case counts had been so low that we were only updating those um, numbers once a week. But as of today, we will now be updating them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And also on our data hub is a new feature where the public can see what the transmission rates are by school district. So if parents want to get a sense of what's going on in their child's school district, that's available uh, to you as well. So we're seeing it across the board, you know, from week to week, there do, there's usually some municipalities that are higher than others, uh, but for the most part, it's around the county. We are still just starting to analyze the age data. You know, it takes a while to get enough data for that data to be meaningful. Uh, we're hearing anecdotally that there are more cases in younger people. However, we also know that there are fewer younger people vaccinated. So again, this remains a pandemic primarily of the unvaccinated. The virus will find the people that are not vaccinated and that's what we're seeing. And with the um, increase in school districts that have decided to take their own, um, the recommendations based off of the county public health, um, guidance recommendations and, and issuing mandates, do you think that the county's public health office could again revisit or, or be more stringent with it? Or do you think it's just gonna continue being on the, the district case by case basis in terms of their, their own guidelines for their schools? Uh, we are working very, very closely with our 22 school districts and our many, many public schools. And we are taking the position that that each school community knows its community best. Uh, in the case of our public schools, they have elected officials who've been elected to approve their individual health and safety plans. We are providing the schools with all the support uh, that we can and that they've asked for and all the data that they've asked for. And we believe that those decisions are best left at that local school board level. Sure, and just a final question with respect to um the increasing case counts that we're seeing, the state as well as uh, Montgomery County's emergency disaster declarations have since lapsed. Is that something that you're continuing or to potentially revisit or in terms of reactivate uh, now that the state's, has, uh, state's excuse me, emergency declaration has lapsed? We're not considering that at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Tim Jimenez with KYW News Radio. Hi, Tim. Um, we can't hear you if you're speaking. 
about that. Can you hear me now? Got it. We can hear you. Sorry about that. Thanks, doctor. Uh, in terms of contact tracing, have we had any, uh, you know, relation to going back to July 4th? Have we seen numbers really tick up since then or any type of super spreader type event since then? Yeah, no super spreader events uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, we do. We are seeing family clusters in our contact tracing, um, but it's been, you know, there's there hasn't been like a particular event or anything like that uh, that seems to have triggered a particular increase in any part of the county. And we're seeing it kind of all over. You know, it seems like once one family member gets it, it's uh, not unusual that other families members get it. And um, no, fortunately, the 4th of July did not seem to produce any particular issues. Right now, I guess one more in terms of, have we seen an issue of people getting their first dose and that's it, they don't go back for their second dose? So we don't have perfect data on that, but the data that we do have uh, suggests that the vast majority of people have been fully vaccinated. But I do want to encourage anyone who has not gotten that second dose, if you did get one of the two dose vaccinations, uh, you would have the best protection by getting that second dose. That second dose is very important uh, in that two dose uh, with those two dose vaccinations. So we're open, ready. You can walk in. Uh, we will be happy to vaccinate you to get you that second dose. It does not matter where you got your first dose. If you got your first dose, you know, at college in another state, uh, doesn't matter. We will be happy to give you your second dose. Okay, this will be our last call for questions. So again, if someone would like to ask a, another question or just um, had something there, please use the raise your hand feature. Okay, we'll go back to Deanna. Just following up on the, uh, the vaccination clinics, um, and I know Kelly will tell me the schedules on the website, but I just wanted to double check, you're still offering all of the doses at the different clinics or are we back to some clinics only offering some doses? If you could just remind people if they can pick and choose when they're open, that kind of thing. Yes, so uh, we're offering Pfizer and J&J &J at all of our clinics. And if people go online to make an appointment, they can actually choose uh, which they want. I believe they can also choose even if they walk up, but we can get you um, a certainty on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have um, Jim McGinnis with the Bucks County Courier Times. Thank you again for taking my question. I just had a quick question. I think it's really interesting about people losing their vaccination cards and then, or, or misplacing them and trying trying to get one again. But how do you how do you go about and verify that a person has been vaccinated when they walk in and say, "I, I lost my vaccination card"? Could could someone explain that? Yeah. Sure. So uh, every vaccination done in uh, the 66 counties outside of Philadelphia County are logged into a uh, immunization uh, database maintained by the Pen Pennsylvania Department of Health. And then if you were vaccinated in Philadelphia, it's a different database but we are able to access that information. And so, uh, you know, Sue Smith comes in and says, oh, I was vaccinated a couple months ago, I lost my card. We just can look that individual up within the system. We do, we do do that. We absolutely confirm that the individual was vaccinated. And then we're able to issue them a specific card with whichever vaccine, or uh, if it was two dose vaccine, those two vaccines and the date that they received those vaccines and give them another official card so they have it. Okay, um, that concludes our questions for today. Great, thanks everybody.